Welcome, everybody. Hello. Happy Monday or whatever day you're listening. This is Spirit Matters, your daily Bhakti Center check-in. My name is Dal Grung, and I'm coming at you live from New York. It's Monday morning, 9 a.m. here in the East Coast, and I'm really happy to be with you, our live Zoom studio audience, and wherever you are tuning in from. Please know that you're loved, you are valued, that you are not forgotten, that you have purpose, and that uh, there's a supreme best friend, there's a supreme person who cares about you and reaching out to you. Do you know how I know that? Because you're listening to this podcast. And this is evidence that you are not forgotten that whatever you're meant to get today, there's a beautiful, they say often at the end of 12 step meetings, take what you like and leave the rest. Meaning that um, whatever you're meant to hear today may it speak to you. And whatever you're not may it just fly by you. <laughs> Um, we're all in different spaces in life. And one of the beautiful things, we're reading the Bhagavad Gita on our podcast, one of the beautiful things about reading sacred literature is that it's it's not just like, oh, I know that storyline. Um, you know, I already know that plot line. I already heard that message. But the same message speaks to us in different ways at different times in our life in different circumstances um, because it's eternal truth. It's eternal principles. It's sanatan dharma. Sanatan means without beginning without end. <clears throat> and Dharma means the eternal nature of the soul. And so it's eternal. Somebody explained the term Sanatan Dharma to me, Sanatan Dharma to me once as the eternal truths of religion or the eternal truths of spirituality. And so whatever religious faith or practice we belong to or ascribe to or don't ascribe to, um, there are eternal truths about the nature of who we are and life, what makes us happy, what brings us fulfillment, um, and they apply uniquely to each of our circumstances and different time and different places according to time, place, and circumstantiado. Is that a word? Circumstantiado? Is that a Scrabble word? Look that up. Somebody look that up. Um, and so we're reading the Bhagavad Gita here today. Uh, we've been having guests at different times. This is a short week this week. We're not going to have a show Thursday or Friday this week. Um, and so it's just me. I'm going to be here reading the Bhagavad Gita with you. One of my favorite things to do. Um, and we've been for a while, we've been here for a while on the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, verse 10. There's a lot there. We're reading that with our friend Kishore Gopal. My wife last week, Rasika Gopi. If you want to hear my wife and I banter with each other, go back to the last week's episodes. We had some really beautiful conversations. Uh, but she also brought up this verse in the 10th, 10th verse, the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Being freed from attachment, fear, and anger, being fully absorbed in me and taking refuge in me, many, many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me, and thus they all attained transcendental love for me. So the idea of we want to love isn't just something that love is a very, very serious, deep thing. And sometimes you may choose love, but your ability to love may be uh, our ability to love um, isn't always matched by our desire to love. And bhakti, spirituality in Vedic culture, Vedic philosophy, Vedic theology, Vedic practice, is increasing our capacity and ability to love. Ever, ever enter into a relationship with a bunch of baggage? <laughs> Or somebody else has got a bunch of baggage. And you have you ever been in a situation where you genuinely really care about somebody, but you act in a way that hurts them? Or you know somebody cares about you, but they act in a way that hurts you. Anybody out there have parents? Anybody out there have parents? <laughs> it's one of the most confusing things in the world where you're paying. You know that they love you. Or they express that they love you yet they acted in a way that hurt you. And we have these phrases like, they did their best. You know, they did what they could. They did, they did, uh, they did, they worked with what, they did the best of, of what they knew, right? And so we have these weird situations where people who love us also hurt us because loving somebody and wanting to love somebody in the material world doesn't always mean that I'm equipped to express that love in the way that I would like or desire because I'm 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 I've got chains 
I've got conditionings. I've got my own wounds and my own bruises and my own desires and all of, all of the things that get in the way of me expressing love in a pure way. And so bhakti is the idea of learning how to love. So, so many of the rules and regulations, prohibitions and prescriptions and all these things, it's not to make you a good person. You're already a good person. You're a spirit soul. You're eternal. You're such an ananda. You are pure spiritual energy. But I've forgotten or I've become so encased with material conditionings that it's fuzzing up my ability to love. And so I want, I just, I want to be, I want to love. And that doesn't just, doesn't just it get in the way of my ability to love. It also gets in the way of my ability to receive love, to trust love, to be open to love, to soften my heart enough to, uh, to accept love. And so when we read this verse in the Bhagavad Gita, it begins being freed from attachment, fear, and anger, because those are the chains. Those are the clouds that cover the sun of our soul, our pure consciousness of God's love in our life. Attachment to uh, Bhagavad Gita tells us very early on in the second chapter, the difference between the eternal soul and everything else between that which is eternal and that which is temporary. So we attach our things to those which are temporary. We become afraid of losing them. Mm -hmm. And then we become angry when they're quote unquote taken away. When people get in the way of our pursuits to attain what we're trying to get. So when we get those things out of the way, we can now choose to direct our consciousness towards higher truth. And we take shelter, taking refuge in me, we take shelter. We become purified by that knowledge and we attain transcendental love for the Supreme, for Krishna. So we've been talking a lot about that verse. That's verse 410. I thought we would move on. Jenna Vatsal said, attach to things, afraid of losing them, angry when they're taken away. You nailed it. Um, okay. Verse 11. Chapter 4, verse 11. Krishna mentions, As all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my paths in all respects, O son of Pritta. So, we just had this verse where we're trying to... we're. We're, we're trying. What was it? Was it C.S. Lewis? Somebody went looked at that 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 evil is the pursuit of good gone wrong. Anybody have that one? I'm looking it up right now. Evil is this pursuit of good. Uh, the badness consists in pursuing them by the wrong method. I'm looking up C.S. Lewis in mere Christianity. In reality, this is C.S. Lewis explains the. I'm, I'm reading here. I Googled it while I was on the podcast. I'm Googling. Lewis explains the Augustinian claim that goodness is original, but badness only spoiled goodness. Quote, in reality, we have no experience of anyone liking badness just because it is bad. The nearest we get to it is in cruelty. But in life, people are cruel for one of two reasons. I have no idea where this is going. I'm reading it for the first time. I hope it's related to what I'm talking about. <laughs> In life, people are cruel for one of two reasons. Either because they are sadists, that is because they have a sexual perversion which makes cruelty a cause of sensual pleasure to them, Hare Krishna, or else for the sake of something they are going to get out of it, money or power or safety. A pleasure, money, power, and safety are all, so far as they go, good things. The badness consists in pursuing them by the wrong method or in the wrong way, or too much. I do not, of course, mean that the people who do this are not desperately wicked. I do mean that wickedness, when you examine it, turns out to be, to be the pursuit of goodness in the wrong way. You can be good for the mere sake of goodness. You cannot be bad for the mere sake of badness. Goodness is, so to speak, itself. Badness is only spoiled goodness. Evil is a parasite, not an original thing. Hare Krishna. What I'm taking away from that from C.S. Lewis is the idea that even when we're doing quote unquote bad, evil, wicked things, 
there is a desire to experience pleasure, happiness, some connection and some sort. It's just a very twisted way of going about it. It's just a very twisted way of going about it. And so when we hear this verse, the reason I was relating it to this verse is all surrender to me, I reward them accordingly. Krishna mentioned in the last verse that everyone is trying to get free from the shackles that are binding them from the experience that the soul is looking for of joy, fulfillment, and connection. Some of us have recognized how to go about that in a way that truly satisfies the self. Krishna mentions as such in a very, very famous verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter two, verse six. Savai pung sang para dharma yato bhakti arad hoksa jay ahaitu kya pratiyata yatma supersedati. I mentioned this word dharma earlier, sanatan dharma. This verse also mentions Savai Pung Sang Paro Dharmo. Paro. Paro means para means the supreme, the topmost, just like we get the word paramount, the mountaintop. Paramount Pictures has a mountain as their logo. That supreme, that paramount dharma for all people, for all humanity, is by which we could attain to loving devotional service to the transcendent supreme being. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. Yayatma su prasidati. Atma, yayatma. For that soul to be su prasidati means satisfaction, happiness. To be completely satisfied in self, it's like this Chinese finger trap where I think if I keep tugging at it, I'm going to get free, but actually I need to go inward, the opposite direction that seems counterintuitive to release and then come out. So it needs to be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. Unmotivated means not having some ulterior, sideways, selfish motivation outside of simply wanting to give and receive pure love. And uninterrupted, meaning continuous, meaning it needs heavy doses, and that completely satisfies the self. So some people recognize that the path of service, I mention all the time, I feel like it's like our daily, our daily quote from Rabindranath Tagore, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. And some of us are looking for that same thing in very twisted, perverse, detrimental, destructive means. I mean, that's the whole premise of the Bhagavad Gita itself also. The Bhagavad Gita is one chapter of a much larger book known as the Mahabharat. The Mahabharat is this whole continuous story of Arjuna and his four brothers known as the Pandavas constantly being harassed, constantly being threatened, attacked by his cousin, Duryodhana. Duryodhana, which literally the word Duryodhana translates to dirty fighter. Duryodhana literally translates to dirty fighter. He engages in life in a twisted, a warped way. But Duryodhana's, what, what, when you really analyze the character of Duryodhana, what is he? He's jealous. He's insecure. He's fearful. He's anxious. He's empty. And he's looking to fill that emptiness. He has a story in his mind that if I conquer my enemies, my enemies being my own, my own brethren, my own flesh and blood, my cousins, whom everybody loves and adores, if I conquer them, and I take the kingdom, and I put myself on top, then I will feel that sense of connection and fullness and happiness. I'll find what my heart is looking for. And he doesn't realize that it's a lie. He doesn't realize that it's a lie. So much of spiritual life is us having our aha moments when we realize that the stories we've been fed, the stories we believe, the stories we weave, 
our lives. The pursuit of fulfillment, of connection, of joy is real. And what we're looking for is real. The way we're going about it is just simply a little warped, if not a whole lot of warped. It was Russell Brand, I quote often, who said that the opposite of addiction is connection. That when we feel such a desperate disconnection, such an intense emptiness, loneliness, lack of meaning, lack of connection, we hit the button, just eject me from this moment, whatever I can do. And it's just another hit, another drink, another, another indulgence. Until we realize like this is not working. And so when Krishna mentions, as all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Pritta. He's mentioning that everyone is on their journey home to me. Everyone is, everyone is looking for me. Srila Prabhupada mentions in the commentary of the verse, everyone is searching for Krishna in the different aspects of his manifestations. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, it is partially realized in his impersonal Brahma Jyoti effulgence and his all-pervading super soul dwelling within everything, including the particles of atoms. So everyone is looking for Krishna in the different aspects of manifestations. We've just forgotten. We're, lo we're lost. We've lost direction. We've, we've, we've gone off course. We're, we're looking for him in the wrong, in the wrong room in the wrong area of town. Like, we are way off course. The commentary continues, but Krishna is fully realized only by his pure devotees. Consequently, Krishna is the object of everyone's realization and thus anyone and everyone is satisfied according to one's desire to have him. In the transcendental world also, Krishna reciprocates with his pure devotees in the transcendental attitude, just as the devotee wants him. One devotee may want Krishna as supreme master, another as his personal friend, another as his son, and still another as his lover. Krishna rewards all the devotees equally according to their different intensities of love for him. In the material world, that's us, the same reciprocations of feelings are there, and they are equally exchanged by the Lord with the different types of worshipers. The pure devotees both here and in the transcendental boat associate with him in person, and are able to render personal service to the Lord and thus derive transcendental bliss in his loving service. This is something I think about a lot in spiritual life is that at the end of the day, we're driving the, we're driving the, the, the ship that it's, it's really, it's really, what do you want? We put a lot of pressure on ourselves sometimes with our spiritual practices, with our spiritual lives, with our, whatever it might be. And sometimes shame can be a big part of spiritual life. We talked about this a lot last week with, with, with Rasika Gopi, the idea of how shame that I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough, et cetera. Um, but we can remove, and we talked about shame being a misconception because we're already loved. We're already whole. It's just, a, it's just, it's just a misconception of reality. Shame is a result of a misconception of, of, of reality. Um, but sometimes there's internal shame and sometimes there's shame or fear of rejection from others in the sense that I have to do X, Y, and Z in order to be good enough. And the reality is you don't do X, Y, and Z to, to be good enough for anybody. We do X, Y, and Z because it's what I want. That's why I was having a conversation with a friend of mine last Thursday. Um, and he was asking me questions about spiritual life and his family and how to help people. And I just said, I have, and this is a true statement, I have very little interest in trying to convince anybody of anything. Interesting for me to say, for somebody who has a podcast every single day trying to spew out spiritual knowledge, but it's really, this is just my offering. This is my service to people that, that want to be here. We don't even, I don't even promote this podcast. I, if you're listening, I honestly have no idea how you found this. <laughs> you must have Google search. You heard it from a friend. I don't know, because we don't even, we probably should promote this more. We're going to try to promote this more get more listeners, people out there. But the reality is that in general, throughout my entire life, I've been practicing Krishna Bhakti for 20 years, trying to. I have spent 10 of those years as a monk, and now I'm going on 10 years married. I have little interest in trying to convince anybody of anything. Because I believe at the end of the day, people are going to believe what you want to believe. People need to make their own decisions. 
why are you here? And if somebody can't answer that question for themselves, if somebody needs somebody else to convince them to perform spiritual life or to fall in love with that supreme person or to perform a spiritual practice, you know, maybe that's a starting point to get someone going, but it's not going to last. At the end of the day, what I've seen of people who withstand the tests of time in a relationship, whether it be material relationship or spiritual relationship, a spiritual relationship with the supreme person, which ultimately that's what spiritual life is, are people that recognize this is this is what I want. I want and need this for myself. One of my favorite movie lines ever. I say it often from the matrix in the very beginning when Neo is like in the car and he's like, this is, this is too much. I'm leaving. And he opens up the door and it's this long hall, like long alley and it's raining. And Trinity says, you're allowed to leave. But the reason you're here is because you know where that road leads. You've been down that road and you don't want to be there anymore. And so for each and every one of us, the turning towards light, the turning towards truth, the rock bottom moment is when we realize, I don't want to be, I don't want to keep living life the way that I've been doing. I may not even have all the answers of where to go, but I know that I don't want to be here. And that's the beginning of surrender. And that's why Krishna says in this verse, as all surrendered to me, I reward them accordingly. So we surrender. And then Krishna says, well, what do you want? If you want relief, I'll give you relief. If you want true love, I can show you the path of true love. If you want to just kind of improve your material circumstances, maybe that will happen, but it's not going to. Like, I think a great question we can also ask ourselves, a great spiritual question is, why do I want the things that I want? That's a great question. Why do I want the things that I want? And when we, because what happens is we actually very often realize that I don't actually want the things that I want. I want the things that I think the things I want are going to give me. I often don't want the things that I want. I want the things that I think the things I want will give me. I have no idea if I said that right. <laughs> you know, what I want. I want, I want a stable, I want, I want a successful career. Do you really? Is that what you want, a successful career? What about a lot of people who have successful careers, but they're not happy? Oh, well, I don't actually want a successful career. I want the sense of purpose and meaning that a successful career will give me. I want the financial freedoms that a successful career. Why do you want financial freedom? Well, I want, I want joy. And I want comfort. Oh, okay. You want joy and you want comfort. And you think that that... Uh, a certain number in your bank account is going to give that. Okay, it's good to know because what happens oftentimes, we end up with the things that we want, but we actually don't really have the things that we want. I got the partner. I got the, I got the, I got the relationship. I got the job. I got the house. I got the, I got the health. I got the bod. I got the bod. I got the body. I got the abs. I got the hair. I got the Instagram followers. I got the deal. I got the contract. And then it's like, well, why do I still feel the way I felt before all of that? Oh, because I didn't realize that these aren't the things I wanted. I had a story in mind that these things would give me a certain something that I was unaware of, unconscious. And I was chasing, chasing them, not knowing what I was really after. So spiritualists. Spiritualists are people that take the time, the hard, nitty, gritty, sometimes uncomfortable, unsexy work. Why do I want the things that I want? And what is it that I really, really want? And we get to the heart of it. And therefore, as Krishna says, as all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Because Krishna is saying, I'm, I'm going to give you what you really, I'm going I'm to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you want. But it's up to you to really determine, is that what you really want? And so each of us owe it to ourselves. Each of us owe it to ourselves to do the work 
of really understanding what we think is going to bring us the satisfaction of the heart that we're looking for. As all surrender unto me, Krishna says, I award them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Britta. The purport and commentary goes on, but that's all the time we got for today, folks. Uh, we got some takeaways here in the chat. Kimberly, what are our takeaways? What are we walking away with? Thanks, Saya. Um, we're walking away that we're already good people, but sometimes we have a material encasing that fuzzes up our ability to give and receive love. Totally fuzzes it up. Super fuzzy. Ultra and... fuzzy. <laughs> sounds like it sounds like a Tide commercial. <laughs> Ultra fuzzy. Choose Tide. <laughs> clean up the mess. <laughs> clean up. Clean up the mess of your life. <laughs> And behind the evil parasite, there's a desire for love. Um, the nice quote you said about Russell Brand, the opposite of addiction is connection. Mm. To get out of the Chinese finger trap, we got to go inwards and search for Krishna in all the right places. Mm. And do the unsexy work of asking, why do I want the things I want? That's a good one. That's a great question. That's a great question. I'm going to ask why do I want the things that I want. That's a good question. That's my takeaway for today. Because there's so many things. We're all, we're all working hard out there. Guys, I know you're working hard. You owe it to yourself to ask why you're working that hard. Um, because, yeah, we want to make sure we get to where we get. All right, guys. I love you tons. I'm grateful for you. Thank you for all the beautiful, beautiful comments in the chat that we've got here. We have a live Zoom audience. If you'd like to tune into our live audience, just go to our website at the Bhakti Center's webpage, click Spirit Matters, or write to us at spiritmatters at bhaktisenter.org. Don't forget, go write us a review on Apple Podcasts, rate and review wherever you are listening from. We love you tons. Please take care. Be well. Bye-bye, everybody.